God bless you, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Godspeed Magazine Live. By now, you're already reading the stories in our revival issue. You know how God is breaking out all around the earth. You know about these massive things. So you know why we're saying and announcing revival like God has called us to announce. But you may be asking yourself, why does the mainstream media continue to cover what they're covering in the midst of all of this? Why are they covering rumors of war and infanticide and fear and hatred? Take a look at the mainstream media today in the headlines. At least 59 now dead, more than 500 injured. New report this morning saying that China used tiny chips in a hack that infiltrated U.S. businesses, including Amazon and Apple. The biggest underground churches in China. And now there's not much left to see. We to Catholic lawmakers who support a new bill, one that gets rid of abortion restrictions. Christopher Watts has in fact confessed to killing his wife, Shanann, and daughters, Bella, who's four years old, and Celeste, age three. And he has offered, apparently, to take police to the bodies. On Wednesday, the U.S. State Department ordered all non-emergency staff out of Baghdad, and the White House has reportedly reviewed a military plan that would see as many as 120 20,000 American troops sent to the Middle East. But they were in an open field, easy targets for the gunmen in the tower. The police have shut it down, and in any case, the lift isn't stopping at the third floor. There's no trace left, and that's what people practicing Christianity in China fear. They'll simply be scrubbed from existence. After watching that montage, you may be asking yourself, why is our revival issue standing alone? Why does it seem like no one is publicizing the massive things God is doing? And we want to, in this episode of Godspeed Magazine Live, give you an additional piece, which is discernment. So we reached out to some dear brothers in the Lord who received the 2018 John Maxwell Transformational Leadership Award. So I pray that you'll enjoy hearing from Jason and David Benham the Benham Brothers, on this topic of discerning revival. And before we go into that, please join me in praying the way when they, Jesus was asked, how should we pray? This was Jesus' answer. So join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts or our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours, Lord, is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. If you've joined us in that prayer, thank you for joining with us. We're gonna come right back with a powerful interview of Jason and David Benham, the Benham brothers, on discerning revival. Hi, we're the Benham Brothers. I'm David. This is my little brother, Jason, by two minutes. We're so excited about a book we've written, Bold and Broken, Becoming a Bridge Between Heaven and Earth. Because we recognize, as I'm sure you do as well, that there is a spiritual disconnect between God and man, mankind, those that he's created. And the Lord wants us to stand in that gap, to be that bridge where he can connect with the people he's created. In Ezekiel chapter 22, we see at the end of that passage of scripture, when there was all kinds of moral confusion going on, the Lord said, I searched throughout the earth to find a man who would stand in the gap on behalf of the land so that I would not destroy it, but I found no one. And Jesus even talks about this gap when he teaches us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's the gap. And we, God is telling us that we are the ones who are meant to fill that gap, but it's going to take boldness to do it. But the problem is, is there's ditches on both sides. Boldness apart from brokenness makes a bully. And bullies don't stand in the gap. But brokenness apart from boldness makes a bystander. Neither do bystanders. And bystanders won't stand in the gap. What it takes is boldness and brokenness. And when you do, you'll become the bridge that connects heaven to earth. And we become, don't interrupt me yet, we become the 
answer to the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. On earth as it is in heaven. By broken, our dad used to teach us when we were kids that only broken horses are fit to pull the king's chariot. The rest are left to pasture. So it's the breaking, it's the submission to God. It's coming under the reins of God, being submitted to him. And of course, by bold, we don't mean the absence of fear. We mean doing what's right in spite of fear. When we are both bold and broken, we become a bridge between heaven and earth. When you're bold and broken, God will bring the boom. What's that? I think that's the one we use. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and thank you for being with us again in Godspeed Magazine. We are incredibly blessed. This is a part of our legacy right here. These guys are with us from the very, very beginning of Godspeed. That's right. Back in earlier years, I won't I say remember. how far back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is David and Jason Benham, the Benham brothers, well known for a variety of things, from, from minor league baseball to being real estate moguls, to being the guys everybody wants at every convention, everywhere, talking points, speakers. and. For me personally, you guys are the convicting guys, right? Like I'm always thinking they're joking around and then one of you says something about, you gotta be a lump of coal. That's right, <laughs> not a right? candle, but a coal. And I was like, wow, that hit hard. So um, the idea that we don't wanna be blown out and the idea that we want the, yeah. you know, the harder it blows, Fire. the more we glow and love the analogy, love the metaphor. So I wanted to bring you right into something kind of heavy, which is we're doing a big old revival issue. Yeah. And I wanted you guys to talk about the realities of qualifying what is revival like mm -hmm. this is a kind of an easy word awakening revival sure. we throw it around mm -hmm. but if i just have a million people and nothing happens is it a revival that's right yeah well, if they're there by numbers alone you know i was listening to a sermon by david barton and he talked about all the great revivals he's the guy that started wall builders he's a historian yeah and he uh he talked about all the revivals that took place in america just in america not not the worldwide revivals and there's some awesome world, worldwide revivals and he said when you look at the first and second great awakening and then another revival after that he said when you look back on it you realize during that time that they experienced true revival he said but the people who were going through it didn't realize it mm -hmm. that when revival really takes place you really don't know it but one of the ways that you can tell if it's truly revival, it's not by the number of people, it's by the reformation that's taking place. Mm. So David and I intimately link revival with reformation. And Tony Evans, who I trust more than I trust myself on issues like this, he said, the way you know if the church is doing its job and if revival is taking place is you look at the culture surrounding where it's taking place and is hell winning? Wow. Is hell winning? Wow. You look at where hell is winning. You look, are st strip joints being closed down? Are abortion clinics closing down? Now, they might not all happen at once, right. but is there a consorted effort from the church in a loving way to bring the truth to those exposed places? And to those Amen. people that desperately need the help. They Come need on. the healing. Oh. You know, you, you look at the the economic uh, situation with our welfare system and everything in America, right. and, and while... Uh, there's all the various political opinions on this. Do you realize the church in America alone, if we took our tithe dollars alone, we solve the welfare system issue. We wow. solve the issue. Now, of course, we want to attach it to work. We want to talk about individual responsibility. Right. These are good biblical things, but that's Absolutely. what reformation means, return to form. You see, we live mm -hmm. in a microwave society, but God is a crockpot God. So even in the church, we want microwave revival. It doesn't exist. It does not happen. So to have a big moment and a big event, while those are wonderful, we thank God for them. We support them. We want to see more of them. That's not revival. Revival is that systemic change that now results in a reformation. And you look back and say, that was a true revival. Amen. And I, I want to, I got to finish this up real quick and just wrap this up, this thought, because if you look in Ezekiel, in the, the, the story of the Valley of Dry Bones, mm. was that Ezekiel 44? Yeah. Uh, the Valley of Dry Bones. I think it's Ezekiel 30, 34. Somewhere around there. But in <laughs> yeah, Ezekiel, 34. me too. He's the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes to all of it. He's the prophet and God gave him a vision and he saw a Valley of Dry Bones. And of course we know that that was the Israelites who had mm. been, they needed revival big time. Yeah. And then God told him, prophesy to the bones. And so he prophesied to the bones and then they arose, you know, and he says, prophesy to the breath. And he prophesied to the breath and then skin started to form on them and they began to, to breathe. And now all of a sudden you had 
all of these people. And it said, they arose a great army. That's key because there's a qualifier on them arising. See, revival is them rising up and having flesh put on their bones. Reformation is they're an army and they're here to get our culture Fight back God's to battles. form. Come on. That's the key. Spiritual Come on. So you can have Come like on. the Jesus movement back in 19, was it 70, 71, 72? 70, was it 70? Yeah, yeah, oh, it was in the early 70s. Okay. It was awesome. <laughs> and some great things came out of it. But I'll also tell you, people need to remember in 1973 what happened. Roe versus Wade. Right. The wholesale slaughter of innocent human beings was ushered in right around that exact same time. David and I would say, let's have another Jesus revolution. But this time, the Jesus revolution sees abortion become unthinkable. Amen. And one day it'll become illegal. Amen. But let's get there. That's true revival. Amen. It is so incredibly true. I, uh, I wonder, um, how do we, how would you guys recommend, I'm thinking specifically Dominic Russo, the, one of the first yeah, Godspeed awesome. Magazine issues. Yes. You know, God He's brought Godspeed work. Magazine yes. to our own editorial focus. He told me God in action. I had no idea what that meant. He sent Dominic Russo before the first world mm -hmm. mission trip. He changed the whole country. And I yes. went, oh, yes. you meant you in action. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, how do we tell somebody like a Dominic Russo um, although he's already kind of there, but somebody that size, huge country vision, yeah. massive. Mm -hmm. How do we get them to start thinking, qualify inside your movement, right? You've got the stadium, let's say the SEND, right? Yeah. We've got the stadium filled. There's 60,000 people. You're sending people out to send the message. But how do we bring it more into the, how do we keep the war on inaction moving towards yeah. the reformation? Well, it's, it's various ways, but number one, we have to understand conceptually, how does God work? God, when he grows things, he doesn't just send sunlight and all of a sudden, boom, here comes this flower or this tree or, I mean, things don't grow like that. I mean, it's, it's water, it's sunlight, it's slow growth. Mm. It establishes root systems. It's the same thing. Even, you know, you're married. I'm married. My relationship, I didn't say, wow, you're attractive. Boom. We get married. When that happens, Done. they Easy. usually don't last. But Easy. what I'm saying is true growth is now over time. I mean, I'm more in love with my wife now than I ever had Come been on. because of the roots that grow deep. Yes. God works the same way spiritually. And we have to understand that it's one body, many parts in the body of Christ. So right. you have a Dominic Russo and you have some of these others, Lou Engel and some of the folks that yes. do these these movements, these moments, these flashes. They were made Jason for and I, that. They were made yes. for that. It's one body, many parts. The part that they were made for is they're a catalyzer. They're a... They're, they start things, but they have to then connect, which I know they do, which is amazing. They connect with the other parts of the body that say, now, let's see systemic change. Let's see that slow growth. And we're not going to make, we're not going to go fast. Yeah, go after God. Everybody leave the stadium, 60,000 people. And yes. the dude's sleeping with his yes. girlfriend. The guy's out there still right, smoking right. his joints. I mean, Real nothing really happening. changes. Right. But when you then partner with the other parts of the body of Christ that say, okay, great, you're going to start the engine. I'm a wheel over here. I'm a hood ornament. Come you on. Know, I'm a fender. I make you have to, as a, as a believer and as a leader of these movements, you have to connect. And if you're not connected that way, don't even start it. Just don't even do it. Just be faithful right where God has placed you and make disciples right where he's put you. And what Amen. we would simply say Amen. is these events are great and we want to see them happen. We just want to make sure Christians don't point to the numbers and say, that must mean revival is taking place. Right. Okay. Certainly it's the spark for revival. Okay. But you really can't see whether or not it's true revival until 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And then we see its effect on the culture right there. So mm -hmm. yes, we need those events. But what we tend to do is say, that's revival. Let's do another event with tons of people for more revival. When in reality, rev that's just yeah, a yeah, spark. Yeah, yeah, just keep the Let sparks going. You know, it's, it's funny because it just hit me real quick and I'm go sorry. Ahead. No, go, go. But, but um, I was uh, at my house and I've got some acreage and we we're burning a bunch of uh, limbs and stuff that I had to cut down. I mean, I had a burn pile this high, but it wasn't burning yet. And I threw some cardboard up underneath it. I, I start the cardboard, the cardboard starts to flicker and I'm like, okay, boom. I see a flame, it's done. I mean, I, I, I took off and left. Well, I come back and there's a you know huge pile of branches and there's not even a drop of smoke. And I'm like, what on earth happened? Well, what I hadn't done was I didn't put the other smaller little limbs over and then a little bit larger and then get some air up in there and then a little bit larger and then I throw the burn. So it took me an hour to get that thing started because yeah. then I had to break smaller limbs and I had to get the smaller ones in place. So now I use 
the spark on the cardboard, which then ignited the smaller, the kindling wood, they call yep, it, yep. which then ignited the medium-sized logs, which could then ignite the bigger ones. And then I had a big fire and it all was consumed. I'm from Northern California. And boy, do we know those fire oh, metaphors. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, do. And it's amazing how many people would freeze to death if they were left yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want to build a fire. <clears throat> That's but, right. You know, it's interesting because for me, you guys are making dots connect, literally. And I want to thank you both while you're here because as you're saying it, it's connecting dots for me. We've been called to bring out like the moral outcry and infant lives matter issue mm -hmm. that we're doing. It's awesome. And, and connect that to. So in other words, yeah. in a sense, we are the pieces that connect the kindling. To the, that's exactly the cardboard, right. To the thing. Our job is to connect the dots. That, that's part so of revival. We're the tendons. I don't know what that's we are. That's right. You're, it, you're, you're a tendon or a ligament. That's right. You're, sure. you're that bridge. And you, you look in Luke chapter 10. This is what revival looks like. And see, we don't even use the word revival in the Bible in this particular passage of Scripture. But to Jason and me, this is revival. The Lord was asked by an attorney, by a lawyer, what are the greatest commandments? And Jesus said, love your Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like, love your neighbor as yourself. And then, of course, it says that the lawyer wishing to be justified asked, well, then who's my neighbor? Now, Jesus talks about revival. He says, a priest and a Levite. So, first of all, before he says that, he says a man was on a journey and he was robbed Beaten and left for dead in a ditch. ditch right. But a priest and a Levite, they Walk. saw him, but they walked by, by. on the other side. It's so powerful. Okay, so isn't it interesting that the Lord said that the two ordained, instituted people that are supposed to help the man in the ditch did not walk by on the other side. But it was the man. It says he looked and saw the man in the ditch. And what happened to him? It said he was filled with compassion. Mm. That's revival. See, Amen. if you're not filled with compassion, if you're Amen. walking by on the other side of the road, your heart is dead. Amen. It's not even beating. It's there's Come no on. compassion there. And then what did his compassion lead to? His compassion led to action. See, it wasn't just empty compassion. Compassion, true compassion, leads to action. Can I piggyback Amen. on that? Okay. Amen. And so one of the keys when revival is truly taking place is we now have this new consciousness of that I need to love my neighbor. And what does love look like? That's the key question: is what does love look like? Okay. <laughs> so true. Because my, your, com your compassion will look different in different situations. And I'll give you two really quick with Jesus. He's preaching. This is right before he fed the 5,000. He's preaching to all these people. And then he looks and he notices that they're all hungry and he feels compassion for them. And compassion in that moment allowed him to actually give them physical food to quench their appetite. Okay? That's right. what compassion looked like. Right. It's, I'm going to feed the hungry. Yeah. All right. Well, fast forward to to another situation where a rich young ruler comes to him and says, hey, what can I have? What can I do to inherit eternal life? Like, I want what you've got, like the best seeker ever. Jesus, you know, of course, they say, well, have you obeyed the commandments? Guy's like, yeah, I've obeyed all the commandments. And he says, then Jesus in the book of Mark, it says, Jesus felt compassion for him. And after he felt compassion for him, he told that rich young ruler the one thing he didn't want to hear. He said, you need to sell everything and then you can come follow me. Sell everything, give it to the poor and come follow me. And the guy turned around, walked away. Can't do it. And it said in the book of Mark, it says this in the New American Standard, I believe it is. He walked away brokenhearted. Mm. Then NASV says disheartened. Disheartened. I think that's NIV. Yeah, RESV. NIV. But it brokenhearted. So Christ's compassion broke his heart. So Amen. on the one side, Christ's compassion looked like Fed feeding somebody. people. On the other side, it looked like Convicted. turning someone off. And this guy felt that conviction, but he turned around and walked away. And you know what? For all we know, he's rotting in hell today because Jesus right. never ran after right. him. Right. That's what compassion looked like. It looks different. And the Holy Spirit is the only one that can actually guide you into that compassion. So the Amen. heart of revival is that you feel compassion for individuals, but you don't di dictate what it looks like. We're because manipulating you're, because God's you're compassion. worried about how right. the person's going to respond. Right. right. You simply right. bring right. that truth and love and let the response be what it may. Because the same boiling water that hardens the carrot, it softens the egg. No, it hardens, hardens the, the egg, egg softens, softens the, the carrot. carrot. That's right. That's Amen. right. The, same, bo the same hot sun that bakes the clay melts the butter. <laughs> it's just the consistency. You, you're not in control of the clay or the butter. You don't know what the consistency of their heart is. But you right. give that same message with the same compassion and let God be God. Yeah, it's so tragic. The worship of the false God of other people's opinions that is at the heart of what is sort of secular thinking in general? You know, how can I make everyone like me? How can I be good That's enough? Right. How can I earn it? How can I, those people don't approve of me. I've got to change my life, you know? Yes. And the reality of that path is just straight to hell. And it's so mm -hmm. brutal. For every person has to experience. You now, again, I feel That's compassion right. for the people that still yeah. are there with, without the single path of following mm -hmm. God. Yeah. And you guys kind of led up to the last question I wanted to ask you, which is, 
If you're bringing a revival, a reformation into your house individually, just you, no one outside is going to hear it. I'm talking about in your family, your wife, your kids, your husband, whoever it is, whichever the relationship. What's the heart of that? Like, what is what is the what's the hard piece that gets you to actually do the thing? Again, there's the sort of platitude, religious thing. Be you know, do these, be mm-hmm. selfless, whatever. How do we get to where we do it in the house? Well, let me start with this. Proverbs twenty two six says, "Train up a child in the way he should go." And in the end, he won't depart from it. Come on. The Hebrew phrase for train up means to touch the palate of. Mm. And what the Hebrew wives used to do is they would take celery, carrots, or whatever fruits or vegetables, and they would take and chew it up. And they would take a piece of it out of their mouth. They'd put it on the tip of their finger. They'd open the mouth of their little infant baby, and they would touch the palate of their baby with that food. That would kick in the salivary glands of the kid, and the kid would begin cultivating an appetite and a taste for that particular food that they put into their mouth. Right? Wow. Train up a child in the way he should go. You see, every morning that David and I woke up, we found our dad either on his knees in front of our couch praying or sitting on an ugly little green stool in our kitchen reading his Bible. Praise it was God. one of those two things. And every morning, he was touching our palate. Now, he wasn't saying anything. He was just living that life. And in time, we began to cultivate an appetite for the exact same thing. And by the time we were 18 and we went off to college, guess what we were doing early in the morning? getting up and getting on our knees in front of the couch because that's what dad did, reading our Bible because that's what dad did. And in time, our heart began to catch up with our new habit. Wow. And that's what began to change our life. So when you talk about what to do at home, just be the real deal at home. Just model it Amen. at home as a mom Amen. or a dad. You know, and if you're a son or a daughter and you're a young kid listening so to this, powerful. yep, you're going to have to have some discipline. You're going to need to get up a little earlier, stay up a little later, spend some time with God and make it a habit. And pretty soon your heart will catch up with that habit. Man, that's incredible. Uh, man, I am so grateful you guys are here. It always blows my mind that I can kind of throw any curveball, not to use a bad baseball metaphor, <laughs> but I can throw any. In fact, there's a thought about the curveball. I'm not going to go there. Don't do it. <laughs> but I'm amazed you guys just constantly have sort of fresh stuff coming through you no matter where you go. You know, it's it's not a publicist. It's not an act. It's not. And I want to let all of you guys know so you can separate the real from the show mm. uh, because Praise you guys have always been the real thing. You stood up in the hardest times against you know, the secular world's persecution and the ridiculous stuff that I watched you go through with HGTV. And I, and I just, I'm so grateful that there's people that just stand. I mean, for all of us, you're standing in a way that what your dad did, you're doing that for all of us when we look well, at you praise your the life Lord. and your walk. So. We haven't always been that way. And we, we, but we talk about these in, in our book is where we failed, but I'll tell you what, and that's part of being broken. You just got to recognize your failures. I mean, this guy, if I told you half of his failures, but I can Not tell you this. I'd be up all night with you. I got That's a million right. and one. But I can tell <laughs> you this, you need to do. that there are lots of magazines and publications and radio shows and TV shows that would never have me and David on because we're talking about the hot topics of the day. And we don't, that's not where we go because we love people. We're here to bring a, the gospel to people, the good news. Amen. But because of that, you know, we need to talk about the boundaries of God that lead to God's blessings. And two of those boundaries, you know, being life and, and marriage. And uh, the fact that you would have us on, not once, but twice, actually says something awesome about your magazine. And I can tell you, God's going to do something awesome with God's Beat Magazine. I'm prophesying that over you right now. Praise God. Where you're going to be this time next year, you're going to laugh at it. You're going to laugh at how good it is. I received that. And I'm going to tell you prophetically in advance, like I did back then, there's going to be a day when you're going to see their faces in our TV show because I can see them leading the show. Can't you see that show? Can you believe anybody would not already have these two guys at the center of their show? (laughs) <laughs> <Make sure. laughs> Me too. Me too. Thank right, you so bro. much, David. Thanks, God bless man. you. Bro. Appreciate bless you, you too, brother. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate yeah, you guys man. so much, man. God bless you. And specifically, the gospel of Christ is coming right here. Godspeed. Godspeed to you, brother. Love that. Godspeed. It's a great name.